I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. I appreciate you spending some time with us. I'm really happy today to introduce to you Millie Salgado from Pocatello, Hello. Idaho. <laughs> Millie, thanks for coming down and sharing your story. Yeah. I think one of the things that's interesting about Millie's story is that it's so new. And yet, when it happens, it, it just happens. And I think you'll find out what happened here with Millie. But it's the same kind of story that I felt myself is once something happened and but as we usually do let's start with where were you born and were you um, raised in the church san bernardino california okay. and i was raised in the church were you? yeah your mom and dad they were oh, my mom was really active my dad wasn't and um when i was about nine they got married in the temple so i got oh, to got go sealed. to the temple and yeah. kneel across the altar to be sealed okay. with everybody yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And so from then on, you were active or you were Yeah, before, I was always I guess, but... growing up in the church, did all the young women things and road shows and, you know, uh, do you remember those? Oh, yeah, road shows <laughs> and camps. And yeah, and all, I did all that stuff, seminary yeah. and just did everything. Yeah. Did you like seminary? Uh -huh. I liked did seminary. Yeah. 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 Baptisms for the dead, I think did you did all those. all that, yeah. yeah. And was this all in California or had you moved no. by then? No, I was born there, but my parents moved to... Um, they moved around a lot when I was younger. Mm. Then we finally wound up in Pocatello, oh, okay. Idaho. Okay, so that's... Eventually, right. yeah. <laughs> well, now uh, you eventually go on a mission. Yeah, um, um, spring of 1990. Okay. Now, before that, you, of course, go through the temple, mm -hmm. as all missionaries <clears throat> do. And how was that experience for you? Well, when I first went through the temple, I found it confusing. I don't, you didn't really know what to expect, and I didn't understand why... I had to learn the signs and tokens and handshakes. I never understood why I had to present them at the veil to be to cross the veil into the celestial kingdom. I didn't understand it, but I just went along with it. Everybody was doing it. I'm supposed to do it. I didn't, it but I didn't seem, understand why I had to do it. It does seem kind of a confusing <laughs> thing, doesn't it? Yeah, so. because I feel like if Jesus died for my sins, that's the way to heaven. And I'll be forgiven, and when I see him, he'll greet me with his arms and accept me. And I won't, I'm not going to give him a handshake. I didn't understand why I had to do that, but I went along and with it. And you actually had a sense of this before your mission, right? That, that Jesus was the way? Well, I understood you. that Jesus was the way, but I didn't realize how the, all the things I learned as a Mormon, how they took away from the way, which oh, is Jesus. Okay. And that's going to the temple and learning that ritual the masonic ritual to get to heaven is not the way and yeah. i didn't realize it at that time but i knew jesus was the way but i didn't realize you know there was a confusion yeah. so i questioned why do i have to learn this stuff why do i have to participate in temple endowment to get to heaven if jesus died for me that's interesting. So I never understood it. And one other thing we should point out, I guess, is that you went before the changes in 1990. Yeah. So you did all the the, the other things that the we... The penalties yeah. and the five points of friendship. And yeah, and then when I came oh. back and went to the temple, those things were missing. And I'm standing there at the veil 
waiting to do the five points of fellowship, wondering, okay, now. And, you know, the worker just says, well, do what I say. Do what and I say. Say what I say and do what I do, whatever. I'm like, what happened? <laughs> Nobody told me what happened. How I did you deal with that? Did, did I just you added some more confusion of yeah. the whole purpose of the temple endowment. If this is the way I'm supposed to do things to cross the veil into heaven, and then you can go and change it, <laughs> what for? Yeah. What, what happened? <laughs> I, I said, said I didn't need that anymore. <laughs> I've said this before probably, but I, I always had that kind of thought that, well, the angels will have to know whether we went through the temple before 1990 <laughs> yeah. or after 1990. But how was your mission? Mm -hmm. You went to San Antonio? It was good. I had some good experiences and some baptisms, and then I met a lot of people that challenged my faith and would accuse me of not being a Christian. Um, I was in a cult, you know. People, How did you deal with those? I would just testify of Christ because in here I believed in Christ, but I didn't, at that time still, I didn't know that my religion taught other ideals besides Christ. But in here, I believed in right. Christ. But you were so, telling them about Joseph Smith yeah, and the Book of Mormon. Right. And, right. And, I, I thought all that was true too. <laughs> and, and told them if they'll pray about the Book of Mormon, they'll know it's true. Yeah, and I did. Isn't that funny how we it have is. that uh, that <laughs> mentality of of, uh, of of just praying and yeah. So anyway, you went to a Christian church or two, though, when you were on your mission. How was that? Yeah, people would invite us, and we would go, and then hope that they would come with us. <laughs> yeah, to your church. But so, um, there were some really good ones. They would sing praises, and we, sometimes we would talk to the pastors about stuff in the Bible, and, and some things they told me I didn't understand even. So, But everybody was always nice and friendly. To us. What was their message, do you think? That now that looking back on it, what were they? What was their message? Do well, you it's, I didn't tell you about it, but okay. Well, one time me and my companion were walking down the street, and a Baptist preacher pulled us over, mm -hmm. and he says, "I want you to come into the house and let's pray." And we knelt in prayer, and he prayed for our souls to be saved. Really? <laughs> and I was like, "What? I should be praying for your soul to be saved, dude." <laughs> But now I look back at it and I see that was an act of love because yeah. he was concerned about us following the, the right way to yeah. Jesus. And then one time we was talking to, to a Baptist preacher about temple marriage and he showed us in the Bible about that guy that, um, is it the Pharisees or somebody asked Jesus, if this woman was married seven times, mm -hmm. which husband is she married to in the next life? Right. And so the guy was telling us that there's no need for the eternal marriage in the temple. No. I didn't understand what he was talking about at that time. Yeah, that it's there's like, no marriage in heaven. Yeah. And, yeah. I was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I just felt sorry for him. I didn't understand it, what he was yeah, saying. I don't think Mormons really use that scripture, obviously. <laughs> I but don't think so. they, I don't <laughs> it was the first they... time I had heard it on oh, my mission. It? Yeah. Like, yeah. So Any other about. questions come up at all about? No, well, my main question, which which led me to Christianity, was the temple question. Why do I have to learn um, these handshake signs and tokens to cross the veil into the celestial kingdom? Because once you came home, you went so, back through the temple again, and eventually get married in the temple. Yeah, yeah. I so did. that's when you noticed that things had changed. Yeah, I noticed the temple and dam had changed, and I just figured, whatever. I just went along with it. You know, you don't. You question things, but you don't want to put it out there and upset everybody and everything. Yeah. And you don't want to be seen as apostate that, oh, she's questioning things and she's going to go against the church. Or... I wonder where that mentality comes from. Is that just a... Well, you're taught to not to look at anti-Mormon and other things because yeah. it might... You know, it might make you start thinking about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you might actually learn something. Yeah, and so you just, I always stayed away from that stuff. And I always tried to defend the church in that Mormons are Christians. And I, didn't, I never understood why people said Mormons weren't Christians. Yeah. I could never understood that, but now I do. I understand now. Yeah. And I understand the concept of grace, whereas a Mormon, I never understood the concept of grace. I have to be this perfect person as much as I can. But the Bible says no one is righteous. No one can be perfect. You can never do enough. That's why Jesus died for you. Yeah. It's, and so, it's not what we do. It's what he did. Yeah. Right? And now as a Christian, you're, my, my works are a byproduct because I live with Christ. He is in me. And my works will show that. 
yeah. I'm with Christ. My fruits will prove that I'm a Christian mm -hmm. and I'm not going to be saved because I do all these wonderful things. You know that parable in Luke about the Pharisee and the, the tax collector? Yeah, the, yeah, the Pharisee. See who is a religious leader is up there. I did all these good things, blah 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 blah, and the tax collector is like kneels down and praises God. Yeah. And so who do you think which one's going to be saved in the kingdom of God? Or the tax collector, which nobody likes. <laughs> <laughs> but you were you were very active after your marriage. I mean, you were. Yeah, and I wanted to raise my kids in the and, church, and I wanted yeah. them to go on a mission. And my boys yeah. never went on missions though, and. That uh, was my dream to have that ideal Mormon family, but sure. I, just, I was never a Molly Mormon, no matter how I tried. I just, it just never was totally good enough. It was never perfect. Yeah. Even though I did all my callings, I was a Cub Scout leader. I taught Relief Society. I taught primary. You know, I did all my callings, and I took them seriously because I, yeah. I feel like you shouldn't accept a calling unless you're going to do it. Yeah. And so I did them all. And you bear your testimony. I mean, what did you think of Jesus at this point? <laughs> well, to me, Jesus, when I was a Mormon, Jesus died for my sins. And um, he was the way, but I didn't understand. Now that I've been separated from the Mormon church, I see all the ways that Mormonism teaches other ways to heaven besides Jesus. And I never realized that, that as a Mormon. Yeah. The temple endowment, you're saved by works first and then grace. Yeah. Well, what happened to the atonement of Jesus Christ? Is it all for nothing? You know, make his death in vain if you're going to say, I have to do all this most perfect stuff. And the other way was ordinances. That one was really hard for me. Ordinances. Yeah, because yeah, I thought you had to be baptized to be saved. And when my friend who's a Christian told me you didn't, I'm like, you're kidding me. But, but, so that took me a little while to learn that Jesus was baptized to fulfill all righteousness. In other words, he was baptized for because out of obedience. Yeah. And you are baptized as a Christian out of obedience to show your commitment to Jesus, to join him but in not, his death, burial, but and not resurrection. To wash, wash away sins. Yeah, so. like the thief on the cross, he didn't have to be baptized. He didn't have his temple endowment but, and all this stuff, but yet he was promised a place in God's kingdom yeah. because he believed and accepted Jesus. Wow. Even though it was on his deathbed, he was still promised. <laughs> you made an interesting comment earlier about the Garden of Gethsemane, too, about how that relates to Jesus dying on the cross. Well, Mormons put a lot of emphasis on that one scripture, I think it's in Luke, I can't remember, yeah. where he was praying in the garden and he sweated um, as it drops were, of blood, as like, it were, drops yeah. of blood, yeah. And there is an actual medical condition for that if you have severe anxiety. Yeah. But Jesus knew what he was going to do. He was going to pay the price for everyone's sin. And I'm sure he was having a lot of anxiety. Yeah. Or else why would he say, Father, take this cup from me, you know? Right. But there's one scripture, and the whole Bible is about the atonement of Jesus and him dying on the cross yeah, for our shedding, sins. Yeah, shedding blood, The church took that blood. one scripture and ran with it and, and made me feel like that's where my atonement for sins was done. And that's why they, they don't use the cross as a symbol because yeah. you're supposed to focus on the garden. Yeah. But in 1 Corinthians 1.18, it says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Uh, I've that never means, read that before either. Yeah, or but unto us that are saved it. is the power of God. So yeah. people that think that Christ's atonement is foolishness because he died on the cross, you know, yeah. they perish. Well, so you've had an eventful year here. Tell us what happened. Uh, you're going along as a good, active Mormon, and what happens? Well, I've always had that temple question, and I've never actually really asked God. I just figured I'd find out when I die. And then I see <laughs> if I have to present the signs and tokens of the first Aaronic priesthood and all that, and see, okay, whatever. <laughs> the ones before 1990 or <laughs> after. after. Yeah. But I was watching a, a documentary called The Holy Grail in America, which is about the Knight Templars. The Holy Grail yeah. in America. Okay. And at the end, they show a square and compass symbol, which is also a Masonic symbol, which is the symbols on the Mormon garments. One yeah. side is a square, I can't yeah. remember which one, and one side is a compass. Right. And I thought... What does a square and compass have to do with Knight Templars? <laughs> <laughs> I went to search and I didn't find anything about it except that Freemasons 
might the theory is might have originated from some of the Knight Templars or right, whatever. Right. And so then I started um, investigating more about maces and realizing that really pretty much the whole temple endowment is Masonic. Did you see that? I, I, was, <laughs> I was shocked when I started reading that. Yeah. The, the five points of fellowship. That's totally Masonic. The yeah. handshakes. The, the dialogue in the temple, the, the way dialogue. it goes, is Masonic. Yeah. And anyway, so I just had enough of it. And I stood up and I, I challenged God and I said, God, I guess I'll never know why I need to learn this stuff to get to heaven. <laughs> And, but anyways, I started researching more about masonry and I was watching a video on YouTube. I can't remember what it's called. And this mason man was talking about masonry or what he could explain. And he was talking about the Kabbalah or Kabbalah, however yeah. you say it, Jacob's Ladder and all these different ways to get to heaven. And I thought of the Tower of Babel. I said, well, the Tower of Babel is a way to get to heaven. That's what they were building yeah. it for, and God got pretty mad about that. And then all oh. of a sudden, it's like I felt this strong power next to me, and this power brought scriptures to my mind. John fourteen six, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, yeah. Yeah, and then the other one that I remember was, I think it's John three sixteen. for God so loved the world, yeah. he sent his son, and who should ever believe it should not perish, but have everlasting yeah. yeah. And I realized, okay, the Tower of Babel was a way to heaven. Jesus is the way. Oh, and it was like a light came on. Masonic rituals is another form of a way to I heaven. was getting taught. Away to, to from heaven. Jesus. Yeah, away yeah. from Jesus. And then these words came into my head. They said, if anything takes away from the atonement of Jesus, leads you a different way, then it's not of God. And I realized at that moment that the temple endowment was not God. It was man's. It was Masonic. It was man's way of teaching me a different way to heaven. And I realized, oh, I see. Thank you, Lord. And you've been dealing <laughs> with this for years. Yeah. Ever since you went through back in 1990. But I will tell you, if you stand up and ask God a question, you will get an answer. <laughs> It may not be the answer because I wanted to know why I needed to know him. Yeah, you I were, didn't, and you my answer was I didn't need to know him. Yeah, it was unnecessary, and I thought, oh man, God must be really mad. <laughs> if he was mad about the people in Tower of Babel, can you imagine? Here I am trying to trying to find another way to Jesus. Yeah, I mean, yeah. why else would you need to go through all that to present all that stuff at the veil to cross over into the celestial kingdom? That is a toll teaching me a total different way to that uh, things I need to do to get to heaven. Well, Jesus died for me. He paid the ultimate sacrifice. Yeah. And when you add things to it, you are making his sacrifice in vain, like he died for nothing. Yeah. So it's like, well, gee whiz. <laughs> <laughs> then after that, I, I, my mind was like changed. It was weird. And I was open felt... to receiving information. It felt like you were born again, I guess, is what we'd say, right? I yeah, mean, just, but in here, I mean, yeah. it was like... But you were willing to maybe step back and look at other things and, yeah. learn, and learn. What did you learn and what well, did you do with this information? After all that, I started, just stuff started coming to me. I Someone told me about the book of Abraham. That was the book of the dead. I was like, huh? So I had to research that. Had you that. ever heard that before? No, and then I... And then I learned about the seer stone and the hat trick and Joseph's polygamy and palandry. And just all this information came from people or I read it somewhere. It just was coming from everywhere. And so I decided I didn't want to be seen as an anti-Mormon. So I went to LDS.org and Did looked you up. Did really? okay. Yeah, like I, the book of Abraham. They'll tell you that Mormon and non-Mormon Egyptologists say it's not the book of Abraham. But they don't tell you the <laughs> actual Egyptologist's version. They're yeah. just tell you they're apologetics and yeah well where's the rest of the information <laughs> well and the church has changed it i think from a translation of the papyrus to an inspired oh translation. they're good at changing things yeah. to match their theology and doctors oh well we have to change it like i didn't know the book of mormon wordings in the book of mormon had been changed almost four thousand times there's I, different four thousand i never knew that either 
That but was anyway, one of my big ones. Anyways, too. I started learning all this stuff, and I thought, oh, my gosh, I have to write this down because it happens <laughs> too fast. It was just God was just throwing this And stuff I started like reading it. the Bible, and I was Did like. Did you really? Yeah, I started with, like, John, uh, John and Romans and stuff that talked about the gospel of Christ. And I was like, and when I got to 1 Corinthians 15, where it talks about the three degrees in heaven, yeah. I cried because I realized it had nothing to do with the three degrees in heaven. <laughs> it was like my mind was able to think and read the scripture for the actual word of God under the spirit and not under Mormon interpretology, interpretology and yeah. influence. I was able praise, to see. Praise God. So I wrote everything down and I'm in a little journal. And it's it, at Christian. Have you looked back at it now? And it's at Christian see, Faith Publishing right yeah. now. It's oh, gonna, is it? Yeah. It's oh, going, you're going to publish? Just what my experience and yeah. what I learned. It's not, I mean, I could make it longer because I keep learning be stuff. Um, finding God's truth. Oh, well, let me let us yeah. know about it. We'll we'll try to. It's in the editing it, process. They sent it back to me, and I'm going through it, and then I have to send it back. <laughs> well, that's what so. I did too. Was write down all these different things that I was learning. I had these long lists of stuff that I'd yeah. never heard before. These scriptures that you were reading in the Bible, you'd probably read through the New Testament yeah. as a missionary. Did they mean anything to you then? Whatever the church had taught me that they meant, the the interpretation, like the three degrees of glory is what the church said. And then when I read it in the whole context of what Paul was teaching is about the resurrection. Yeah, and there's only celestial and terrestrial, which is heavenly and earthly, has nothing to do with, and there's no telestial, that was made up. It was just... Isn't that a... It's mind-blowing, isn't it? I just feel like I... That the church has lied to me. The prophet and apostles should come clean and repent of their sins. They know the truth. How can they be the leaders and not know all these truths? But yet they still they still carry on it and lead people away from worship and the true, true Jesus. Even President Kimball said the Mormon Jesus is not the traditional Jesus of yeah, the Bible. Yeah, I that, think it was President Kimball, Hinkley, wasn't it? I think. Or is it President Hinkley? I yeah. can't remember. And I was like, oh. And it's like... Well, in, in, in general conference and at the end sign and everything is so superficial. They never talk about anything really in detail. And anything that does come up, it seems like they allow others to do, do the interpretations. You know, they don't, they're prophets, seers, and revelators, but they aren't telling us well, the details. The Bible says in the last days, those that call themselves apostles are false. <laughs> <laughs> they're only apostles I know in the last days. <laughs> So we could see some interest. Now, did you share any of this with your family? Have you? I've tried. I've talked to one of my brothers, one or two of my brothers, how many, and I, how my many sister. Brothers and sisters did you have? I have three brothers, one sister, and my mom. I tried to tell my mom about the book of Abraham, that it was actually the papyrus of the book of the dead, yeah. and she she just was silent for the longest time. And then I thought I better change the subject because I think that she was, was mad. Really, yeah, yeah, didn't want to say <laughs> so. That was the end of that. And the brothers and sisters, <laughs> anybody? Well, I talked to my sister the most, but she she already knows a lot of this stuff, but she still, her life is in the church, and she's not willing to give that up for God's truth, which really hurts because yeah. she does know a lot of things. But and here you are. I mean, you're a return missionary, right, in the temple. I mean, they certainly would have had a level of respect. You, you were active in the church and taught and everything, and and yet they just kind of dismiss well, what you've learned, right? I can understand because I used to be in that Mormon box of thinking. Yeah, and I if I look too. back on my life, I see lots of instances where Jesus was knocking at the door or peeking through the window trying to tell me something through other people, but I wouldn't listen. You know, like that instance where someone was telling me about the Joseph Smith and the hat and the seer stone, and I defended the church against it, but I wouldn't listen that that might be true. You thought it had to be the gold plates and, yeah. Yeah, and when it actually was true, let alone the seer stone that Joseph Smith put in the hat, he found it. Uh, in a well on Willard Chase's farm. God didn't even give it to him. It wasn't <laughs> even, uh, sorry, it wasn't even a divine origin. Right. It wasn't. But yet, so I'm supposed to believe that Joseph Smith translated the goat plates with a rock he found in a well, all yeah. on his own. <laughs> yeah. And he wasn't even looking at the gold plates. His head was in a hat. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, 
It, it is kind of funny when you think back on it. And, and yet we talk about the bad news and the good news. And the bad news, of course, the Book of Abraham and Book of Mormon and archaeology and all that stuff. But, and polyandry and polygamy yeah. and stuff. But the good news is what we found in Jesus, right? Yeah. And do you understand? I mean, how do you, how do you relate now with Jesus compared to... I oh, get yes. definitely give more praises to God than I never did that as a Mormon, but I definitely give more praises to him because he set me free in knowledge and truth. Yeah. All my whole life had been a lie and I didn't even realize it. <laughs> it didn't and worshiping really what, yeah. what when we say Mormons aren't Christian, it's because they they have a different perspective of exactly. who Jesus is and what he did for us. Exactly. Yeah. And the fact that they think we can become gods. I'm yeah. dealing with a person right now that's saying I'm a son of perdition, of course, because I think because I think that I he can, he thinks he can become a god, and, and now that's I so don't think so. Yeah, what's the word? Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Right? Yeah. And um, exactly, it's like the Bible says, "I am God. There is none before me, and none after me." Yeah. Well, I don't think you're going to be a god, dude. <laughs> <laughs> don't think so, so isn't that funny though that they go to the temple with that expectation that they can be married for time and all eternity, that men are expecting probably to be polygamous up there in and heaven. Having, and have having lots many. of wives and spirit babies, and having lots of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Well, the women are pregnant. And having, <laughs> I don't know. doesn't sound like heaven to me. <laughs> no. Yeah. I, I, it doesn't. It's just, yeah. And I just, I really want to, my family to know the truth. I just wish they would put their Mormon beliefs on the shelf and... Ask God to know His truth and open up the Bible and really read it and, and try to understand it. And hopefully they will learn the truth. But, yeah. you know, if, you're, believe you're, if you believe you already have the truth, you're not seeking it. And you're not going to, you right. build up pride and arrogance. I have the truth and you don't. You know, that's how I was as a Mormon. I have the truth and it's you very, don't. very proud. But I didn't have any truth. Yeah. God humbled me and, told, and showed me that everything was a lie. The true sons of perdition are the leaders of the church because they're <laughs> teaching you lies that take you away from the true Jesus of the Bible. Yeah. I, I will say that. Yeah. Well, they're going to hurt my feelings if they get mad at me. I mean, that's why we're doing this show. And, and this has only been in a few months for you, and yet you have have this conviction of, of who Jesus is. And what I think I've always us. known, but, I, but the... Things I learned from the church was, you know, confusing yeah. and kind of inhibited what I knew in here in my soul. And not willing to really look and study. Yeah. Well, Millie, guess what? Our time is oh, up. Oh, Yeah. And I didn't let so you do fast. any talking hardly. No, well, that's the, <laughs> it's supposed to be your interview, so that's perfect. So anyway, Millie, thanks for coming down and sharing your story. And yeah. You're sweet, and uh, good luck to you in your future, and we'll see you again. <laughs> Thank you.